Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And it is really late, so I'm trying to keep my voice down and it's hard to do that because I'm very excited to share this news with you, which is the box office for Venom Let There Be Carnage this weekend domestically here in the US made $90 million, which is awesome. The second biggest opening for an October release ever. And that means it was very close to beating Joker. It was like $6 million away from beating Joker, which came out before the pandemic. Um, and then now this being $90 million is the most any movies made domestically during the pandemic. So since like March of last year till now, and I know we went months and months and months with no movies, but that includes, you know, Godzilla vs. King Kong. You know, this movie did better than that opening weekend. Fast and the Furious 9, uh, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, like big heavy hitters made by massive studios. And little old Sony, the, the little engine that could, came out with another hit with Venom. Now, of course, we're going to get a drop next weekend, and it might be a big one because James Bond comes out here in the U.S. next weekend, which is right now killing it overseas. That was released this weekend uh, over in the U.K. and other countries, and it made over $100 million internationally just this weekend. So that's going to start releasing here in the U.S. and in other territories and countries around the world. So we're going to see that pulling in a lot of money as well. And then you have Venom, who is going to start releasing over the next few weeks in other countries and territories also. But we still haven't heard a release date for China yet. You know, Shang-Chi and Black Widow never released in China. So those movies didn't really have a chance of hitting a billion dollars. But if Venom gets a China release date with this kind of opening weekend, it has a, a small shot at actually making a billion. Or at least getting up to where it, the first movie was, which was like $875 million, which was way more than... Even Sony, I think, thought that movie was going to do when they released it. They had hoped for something that big. But, you know, with this movie, this is not like an Avengers movie or anything like a, a Warner Brothers superhero movie where they spend a couple hundred million dollars on it to make it and market it. This movie is like the first movie. It was like around 100 million to make, or maybe a little bit more this time around. Um, and then they didn't have to market it as much because they had they could wait until like a month and a half before the movie came out and then they ramped up their marketing so they didn't have to do too much they did a lot of like uh, zoom interviews and things like that so they didn't have to fly people out or go to places and you know as much as they would have um, before the pandemic so they got to save at least a few bucks there um, so this is just good news all around for this movie is that it started off so strong here in the u.s and yes, it has a bad Rotten Tomato score, but who really gives a crap about that? I mean, for us fans, we know to look past that, but there is a big audience out there of moviegoers that do like to see what the word of mouth is, and they will go to Rotten Tomatoes. So the, hopefully they're not looking at the critic score, um, or if they do, hopefully they soon after look over at the audience score, which just like the first movie, you know, the audience score is much higher. Uh, the audience score, I think, is around when I'm recording this video, is like 85 plus percent uh, audience score. And then I think the cinema score for this movie, Venom Let There Be Carnage, is a B. So that's also good, you know. Uh, so to me, I hope word of mouth is keeps spreading. I hope it gets out there. You know, them having the marketing campaign, like that's the thing is they really targeted this movie really well. Like when Shang Chi did great at the box office, they said, okay we aren't going to hesitate. We're moving our movie up. We're going to get away from James Bond. We're going to get ahead of it. We're going to get away from Halloween Kills. And we're going to, you know, because they share a, a similar demographic in younger men and middle-aged men. They share that demographic. So they moved up and that move paid off. So whoever's decision that was, you can bet they're either getting a promotion or getting some kind of bonus or something, you know, for sure. Uh, because that was a very smart move to move the movie up two weeks and look at what happened. They had a huge, huge weekend. The biggest movie of the pandemic and the second biggest movie for October of all time right behind Joker and I know that people out there would be like well if this movie was rated R it probably would have done more not really I probably I mean who knows if it would have because if you look at you know Birds of Prey and uh, and Suicide Squad those are other comic book movies that were rated R they did not do very well I mean they I think Birds of Prey did okay opening weekend but it kind of died off fast and Venom still could die off fast we don't really know but there was a lot of cool uh, feedback from 12 year olds that saw this movie. I actually saw this demographic out there where they asked people like, oh, you know, during certain age groups at the theaters, what they thought of the movie. And a lot of kids that were, that went to the movie with their parents that were under 13, that were like 11 or 12, they said it was the coolest movie they'd ever seen. And, you know, that's just, again, Venom's cool, man. Like I told you when I worked at the comic store, little kids would come in and see pictures of them and just stare at them. And, and then her mom like, oh my God, you know, that could, you know, don't, you know, turn your head if you're afraid. And he's like, no, I'm not afraid. He looks cool. You know, so that's the thing. The look of Venom is like, they, they nailed it. Todd McFarlane and Eric Larson and all these amazing artists that 
you know, drew him for the first time, that they struck gold. And even Todd McFarlane uh, tweeted or Instagrammed, I think, um, saying like, you know, well, hey, you know, sometimes when you create something, your children grow up to be very successful and it's a, it's a real awesome thing to see happen. And that's what happened is, you know, he's co-creator of Venom and Venom had a great, great opening weekend. So hopefully that'll be good for Todd trying to get his own Spawn movie off the ground. Hopefully Venom's success, him being a co-creator, hopefully that leads to more meetings with him so he can get his movie made too. So uh, this is just great though. I was so happy to see this news. It's so exciting to see it start this big. And again, we're probably going to get a, a big drop next weekend. As long as it's between 50 and 60%, that will, that will mean very good things. Uh, but if it's more than that, you know, that's going to hurt a little bit. But at least this weekend, everyone's celebrating. Tom Rothman came out and gave some uh, quotes to the press saying how proud he is of Tom and Kelly Marcel and Andy Serkis and everyone who worked on this movie and the group effort that it was to bring it to life like this. And of course, you know, people are going to have their criticisms of it or they're going to love it. They're going to hate it, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, numbers matter. And this weekend, at least, it's on top and it set all kind of, you know, pandemic records at least um but it did get up there really close to joker which is very impressive because i as you guys know i liked joker a lot and i thought that was a very well-made movie and beyond like 12 year olds loving this movie we had 62 percent of ticket buyers were male and 55 percent were males that were under 25 so again very similar demographic to the other movies like james bond and and uh, halloween kills uh, they'll have you know their own uh demographics that'll shift in percentages and stuff but a lot of males in that age range will probably go see all these movies if they're able to. Um, so that's why they mention that here. So it's it's uh, great that this movie's doing so well, though. Uh, I was really happy to see it pull these numbers. It's way more than I thought it was going to be. And I think they were talking about it will probably come out in, you know, VOD and digital rentals and all that stuff probably before the holidays, I'm guessing, or around the holidays, uh, kind of like the first one did. But this movie made more money opening weekend than the first movie did. And it's during a pandemic. I mean, that's amazing. And it's it beat, like I said, Shang-Chi, Black Widow, Godzilla vs. King Kong, Fast and Furious 9. Like, it's beaten all these great big franchises. And it's just, I love it. I, this is the little engine that could. And that's one of those things where I love doing this show. Because uh, we do sometimes, at least in the beginning, a lot of people were like, oh, why are you doing a show about Venom? He sucks. The movie's going to suck. It, it needs to be rated R. It needs to be this. It needs to be all these things. And that's fine. You can have those opinions. But as long as it keeps making money like this, um, it's going to keep going forward in this direction uh, for sure. And, uh, and yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. And I'll try my best to you know stick to this and, and make videos um, to the best of my abilities with everything that's going on. I'll still, you know, obviously I'll still try to make time for Venom and all of you parasites out there. So let me know what you think of this. I'm so excited. And then maybe in another video, I don't know if I'll do it, talk about the Rotten Tomato score. I mentioned it here. I really don't care that critics hate this movie. I don't really give a shit about them. 85% uh, of audiences love it. Cinema score is high. And a lot of you I know, of course we have criticisms. But just because we have criticisms doesn't mean we don't love the movie or like it on some level. And that's something I see a lot of is sometimes people, they fixate on one thing and they just can't see past it. And they go, well, it's it's not rated R, so I don't like it. Or it's not this. I don't like it. Or this scene bugged me, so I don't like it. And uh, like in video games, people are like, oh, it's that kind of gameplay? I don't like it, you know. And to me, one little thing is not going to slow me down. Uh, if there's one thing I've been doing over the last like 11 years is getting over obstacles. And not just one, but many obstacles. So even if I have critical and stuff, I can still find myself enjoying it. And so I'm looking forward to seeing this movie again today when this video goes up. I'm looking forward to watching it again and giving you guys my non-spoiler review. Um, I'll have that up in the next day or two. And then, uh, and then I'll probably try to also record my spoiler review tonight, but I'll save that for um, October 15th weekend. Uh, maybe even release it on the 15th or 16th. And that way, uh, that's... A, to coincide with the UK release of, of this movie, which I hope it does big there. I hope it keeps releasing. I hope it gets China release and makes more money. And I hope this thing, if it doesn't pass what, you know, I hope it definitely passes what the first movie made. So if it can get to 900 million, that'd be amazing. But if it could actually hit the billion dollar mark, if it could be the first pandemic movie to hit a billion dollars, that would be awesome. But it needs China and other big, uh, you know, territories and, and countries to release it. So hopefully that happens uh, for, for the movie's sake. But at least for now, it's a big hit, and I'm so excited it's number one. It's It deserves it. It's number two for October, but that's okay because Joker's number one, and uh, it earned that too. I like that movie. 
But this is, it's so exciting to see Carnage and Joker, uh, you know, with Venom, like up at the top there for biggest October releases of all time. It's just very fitting, <laughs> considering those two met in a comic book before, uh, Carnage and Joker, I mean. So, um, yeah, so let me know what you think of this news. I'm obviously elated by it and very excited and happy. So, um, but I want to hear your thoughts. So let me know. And again, stay away from spoilers down in the comments. We're still not at that point yet where we're talking about them. We're going to still wait another week, week and a half or so before we get into spoilers. Um, but yeah, I'll try to have some videos coming up soon for those of you who are itching to talk about spoilers. I'll try to have at least one that has like minor spoilers in it, but uh, we'll get to that point maybe in like in a couple days. So for now, let me know your thoughts and we'll continue the conversation down below. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.